calm, focus, and balance. Fill the whole space. Back up. Back up a little bit. Fill the whole space. Back up. Look at all this amazing space we have back here in your classroom. There we go. And then begin all together. All right, listen very carefully. So you are all within your own kinesphere. Kinesphere, the first part of kinesphere is for kinetic. What does kinetic mean? Do you remember kinetic energy? Yeah, the energy of movement, right? And a sphere is a 3D shape. That's like a ball, right? So we each have a kinesphere around us. Really quickly, paint that kinesphere. Paint the front, paint the back, all the way down to the floor. Paint the sides of your kinesphere. Make sure you don't get paint on your neighbor. Paint the space between you and your neighbor. Very nice. Go ahead and wipe that paint off your hands. Look around the circle, activate your imagination. Just see all of the bubbles all around, those kinespheres all around the circle. Good, so we have a bunch of kinespheres within the larger space that we share, our movement, our dance space, right? So we need to know how to move through this space without popping our own kinesphere and without popping the kinesphere of our peers. So there are three things that could pop our kinesphere. What's the first one? Who has an idea? Yeah. Touching someone, Touching someone or bumping into someone. What else, Brandon? Um, Hurtful things that might knock you into an object, furniture, right? So we have bumping into another person, bumping into another thing. What else, Loriana? Feeling sad. Feeling sad might pop your space bubble. Maybe, but the one that I'm really looking for is, yes, JR. Unkind words. Yeah, and actually words of any kind are gonna pop our kinesphere. So right now we're talking, we haven't started moving yet, but the point of today's lesson is we wanna communicate with our bodies rather than using our words. So we're gonna do our very best to use as little words as possible today, okay? So in order to, let's get started, we are going to put on that kinesphere, and remember to not pop our space bubble with our words bumping into other people or objects. So we all need to cross the circle and find a new space in the circle when I say go without popping our own kinespheres or popping the kinespheres of others. So the very first energy choice we're going to make is using calm, slow, focused energy. So let me put on a song that will help remind us of that pace that we want to keep. Let's back up just a little bit, guys, on that side. So you're going to be picking a new spot on the circle to move to, okay? Ready? Go. Using calm, focused, slow, balanced energy. Find a spot on the circle. Nice. I like how we all shifted carefully just to make room for our friends. How did that go? Raise your hand if you popped your kinesphere. If you feel like you popped it, what can you do differently? How can you problem solve? You don't know? How could you problem solve if you popped your kinesphere? What are some ways that we can move, some adjectives to describe the way we can move to make sure that we're not popping in anyone else's kinesphere? You could, but how could you not pop it in the first place? What are some ways you can problem solve? You can, like, walk carefully and, like, look around your surroundings and, like, tell someone yeah, but you're not going to use your voice, right? That's what, that's a tricky part. So really using, I think you're talking about looking all around you, really using your peripheral vision is a good one and walking even more carefully. Let's try it one more time. Go ahead. Good. Five. Find the empty spaces. Four. Three. We need to make more space. Back up a little bit. Two. One, how did that go? A little better? Thumbs up? Nice. So we actually have so much space in this classroom, we need to make our shared space bubble a little bit bigger. So back up, really use that space. There you go. Now we should make it a little bit easier. 
It is like a giant kinosphere. So the next step is to bump up the energy a little bit because sometimes when we're moving, when we're dancing, we're not always calm and peaceful. We're not always doing ballet, right? Sometimes we're doing hip hop. Sometimes we're doing break dancing and the energy rises a little bit, including, and the tempo of the music gets picked up a little. So I'm gonna change the tempo of the music and I'm gonna ask you to increase your energy. That doesn't mean that we're less careful. We're still gonna be careful, but we'll just have more energy. Thumbs up if you think you can do it. All right. Take a deep breath. I know. All right, let's try something a little more upbeat. Go ahead and find a new spot. And five, four, three, two, one. Back up a little bit more. Moving even a little bit quicker. You have five seconds. Find a new spot. Without any sound. You got it. Wow. And freeze. Thumbs up. If you did not pop your kinosphere, put your hands down. Just raise your hand if you popped your kinosphere. It's okay. Honest reflection. Nobody popped it. So that's just proof, right, that we can move through the space with a higher energy, with more excitement, and still be careful and conscious of the people around us. Excellent work. Really nice warm-up. By the time I count to five, you're going to find a spot within this shared space. I don't want anyone behind the desks over there, behind the desks over here. That's what we call outer space. Find a space within this area here where you're not touching anyone or anything, standing on your two feet facing forward. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Very nice. Minor adjustments. Just move forward a little bit, fellas, in the front. You don't need space to stretch your arms wide out, but we want to make sure that you would have enough room to move. Very nice. All right, so we're just gonna run through the brain dance as a quick warm up. Take a couple of deep breaths. Inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. So nice. Let me pull up that music. All right, so starting with the breath, always inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, let it come out. So nice. One more time like that. Let's see if we can pick up the tempo. We go even faster. Big breath. So nice. Our skin is our biggest organ, so we're just going to tap it. Wake up the skin on your arms, skin on your legs, all the way down to your feet, all the way back up your legs. And you can even brush your skin off gently. Give yourself a little brush. Wake up the skin on your belly, the skin on your legs. So nice. And then we're going to make ourselves into a small shape. So squeeze everything into your midline, your solar plexus right there in the center of your belly. And then as you exhale, reach and stretch out nice and wide. Good. Squeeze everything to the center and then make the biggest shape you possibly can without bumping anyone. So nice. Squeeze everything to the center and one more big stretch. Very nice. Now just move your head. How many different ways can you move your head? To the beat. Forward and backwards. Maybe your chin comes forward and back a little bit. Side to side. Very nice. And then just move your tail. A little tail action. Good. Big inhale, open up your chest, big arch in your back, and then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, open up your chest, exhale, fold forward. Very nice, we're gonna isolate the bottom part of our body, so our feet are grounded, our legs are still, and just the upper body moves. So you can move very fluidly, or you could do a little robot. We see all the different ways you can move your upper body, nice. Some of us are swimming, some of us are really getting our head into it. Nice. And then keep your upper body really still. And how many different things can you do with your lower body, with your feet? Staying in one spot. Nice. Some of us are moving our feet really quickly. Others are nice and graceful. Awesome. And then come back to center. We're going to take a line right down the center of our body, our midline. Keep your right side of your body really still. Just move your left side. So maybe using a little bit of balance. How still can you keep that right side of your body without moving the left at all? Awesome. And then the other side. How many different ways can you move it? Moving that shoulder, keeping that left side of your body really still. Awesome. And then jump your feet apart. Take your right hand across the body, opposite knee. 
Same thing, left hand, opposite knee. Maybe you even follow that right hand all the way across your opposite foot. Follow with your eyes, left hand, opposite foot. Back to center, jump your feet together, right hand behind your head, left hand out in front, stare at your thumb as it bounces all the way across your body. Little sprinkler action. And the other side, follow the thumb all the way across. Good. And then any other dance moves you can think of that kind of cross the center line of your body, maybe do a little step and cross. Whoop, I'm missing my, those cross the center line of your body, good. Maybe disco, I like it. See a couple of very, good. And then come on back to center. Take a deep breath, inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. One more time, inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth, very nice. Close your eyes or just gently soften them. And reach up, imagine that you're pulling a star out of the sky. And place the star in the crown of your head. And then watch the bright light as it drops all the way down that center line of your body. We call it the midline. Imagine that line like the axis in the center of the earth. And your body is going to rotate around that axis, just like the earth around its own axis. Once you make your way all the way around once, you can go ahead and rotate in the opposite direction. You can do it, you're strong enough. Go ahead, the opposite direction. And once you make your way back to center, big inhale, one more deep breath. And then exhale, hands by your side. So good. So what we just did with the brain dance is we explored all the different ways that our bodies can move, right? So we created curvy lines, we created straight lines, didn't we? So the very first element of dance that we focus on, it begins with a B and it's our Bodies. It's our bodies. Excellent. So body is number one. Second one begins with an E. Mentioned it already. What were we? We were talking about, Axel's a good one. We were talking about different types of this when we were in our kinesphere. We moved with calm, focused, and balanced energy. Exactly. And then we picked up the pace. So the second one is energy. We can increase our energy, like when we were doing sprinkler. And then how did we decrease our energy? How did we calm it down in that brain dance? Yeah. Like, going to a spot. Yeah. What do we do with our bodies and our, what do we do to calm the energy? Yeah, we exhaled, right? Using the breath as a way to calm the energy. So we have B-E-S stands for, anyone remember, Loriana? Not stop. Very close. We created a kinesphere so that we knew our own space, right? We have our individual dance space, and then we have the dance space that we share. Hey, another thing that I want us to think about when we talk about space is our levels. So remember, when we were, when we were teaching tableau, we used low-level shapes for our tableau. We used medium-level shapes, right, where we really bent our spine. And then we use high-level shapes where sometimes we're even up on our tippy toes. So by the time I count to five, cr please create a low-level shape, listen, without lying flat on your belly. So I should see lots of interesting ways that you can hold your body close to the ground without laying down, right? So I can be in a push-up position, I can be in a side plank, I can have one leg forward, I can be in an arm balance. Go ahead, five, four, three, two, one. Interesting, so much better than being flat on your belly. By the time I count to five, you're going to be in an interesting shape at a medium level, really using your spine, bending your spine. One, two, Three, wow, four, five. By the time I get to five, you're in a high level shape. One, two, three, four, five. One more shape of your choice. One, two, any level. Three, four, five. How awesome. I see shapes with curvy lines, straight lines. I see balance. I see us holding still. We're in a pose. And then come back to a neutral position. So awesome. So ground your feet again to help neutralize that energy. Big inhale and then exhale, let it come out. Really nice. So we explored body energy and space. One more thing I want to mention with space. We can explore different pathways, okay? So we can explore straight pathways where we're making those angles as we turn, right? 
straight shapes with our body. And we can explore curvy pathways where maybe we're even making curves with our body as we move around on those curvy lines. So why don't we explore the space walking on straight pathways, kind of like a robot. Go ahead and explore the space walking around, being aware of our own kinesphere and the kinespheres of others. As you're walking on those straight pathways, see how many straight shapes you can make with your body. Maybe you pick your knees up high. Ooh, very nice. I see some of us working at a very high level. You can explore uh, straight lines and pathways at medium and low levels even. Interesting. And then freeze in a fantastic straight lined shape with straight arms and legs without talking at all. We don't want to pop our space bubble. And then let's transition to curvy lines and pathways. Go ahead and explore curvy lines and shapes with your body. I want you to find a new space. Oh, find your own area. There you go. Without popping our space bubble or anyone else's around us, remembering that our voices can pop those space bubbles and freeze in a fantastic curvy line shape. Beautiful. And then come on back to a neutral position. What was challenging about that? I noticed some of you are starting to pop your space bubble. What was challenging, Tara? Not like crashing into other people. Yeah, once we started to explore different ways we can move our body, it was hard not to crash, right? Staying balanced. Staying balanced when you're being on one foot. What else, Mia? Um, watching where you're going. Watching where you're going. I also noticed it was hard not to laugh. That's a laugh or talk, right? Yeah. But we're expressing ourselves with our bodies rather than voices. So that just takes practice. But you're doing a pretty good job of that, I would say. All right, so it's time to move on to the meat. The last element of dance that we're going to explore is time. Time has a lot to do with tempo. Raise your hand if you've heard of tempo in music class. So we're going to listen to a couple of different songs today that have different tempos, right? How fast or how slow we move. Sometimes we'll move faster in one part of a dance and then slow it down in the middle or the end of a dance. So I want us to be thinking about using different speeds as we move today. Sometimes we'll move faster, sometimes we'll move slower, bless you. And that's gonna help us to really portray the water cycle, thinking about those different speeds we can move at. So body, energy, space, time, those are the elements of dance. Did we cover it? Cha-ching! Awesome. Now we're gonna get into the sequence of the water cycle. So by the time I count to five, please find yourself sitting face to face with one partner. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Does everyone have a partner? We have an even number. All right, so first question I want you two to discuss is when can H2O, H2O is water, what are some examples of H2O as a solid in nature? Go ahead, talk to each other. Ice, 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 and like frost, snow, there's kind of like frost, mountains. So we'll take about 10 more seconds. Like a lake that's ice cubes. Ice cubes. Five, four, three, two, one. Please make me your focal point. Excellent. This is what I heard. Snowflakes, frost, ice cubes, icicles, igloos, frozen lakes, frozen ponds. What did I miss? Hail. Hail. Glaciers. Glaciers. No? Icebergs. Icebergs, excellent. So I have a bunch of answers here that I thought you might say. By the time I count to five, you are going to take the shape of one of those frozen examples of H2O on your own. You're not working with your partner. You're gonna create a shape of an icicle, an iceberg, a frozen lake. Go ahead, you have five seconds. One, two, three, four, Five frozen, such an interesting, diverse group of frozen H2O. Beautiful, come back to your partner. All right, now where, oh, where have you seen, where have you seen liquid water? What are some examples of liquid water? Not in the classroom or in your house, those are boring. I want, boring, I want you to think of liquid water out in the environment. Go ahead and talk to your partner, I'm coming around to listen. 
All right, so I heard so many good ideas. Waterfalls, hot springs, oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, sewers. What else did I hear? Um, uh, roots and rain, like water in the roots. Water moving up the roots of a plant. So interesting. Brayden. Um, canals and water dripping off of an ice crystal. So many different ideas of an ice crystal. Good one. Nature. But be specific. Go ahead, Riley. Rain is an example. Rana. Rana. Very good. You're using your science vocabulary. Precipitation. Precipitation. Very nice. So where have we seen liquid water? You guys hit them all. Rivers, lakes, palms, <laughs> fountains, waterfalls. All right. So here's the deal. When we did our solid H2O, we were frozen in a position in one spot. When you are showing us liquid H2O, you have the opportunity now to show us Locomotor motor movement, which means you're no longer stuck to be in one spot. You can move through the space. This is what we call locomotor motor movement, okay? But again, being aware of your body and the other bodies around you so you don't pop kinospheres. So think about your favorite type of liquid in the environment and how you would move like that liquid. Take a moment to yourself. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Take a moment, and then go ahead and stand up. I'm gonna put on some music, and I wanna see you moving around like liquid H2O. I should see rivers, I should see fountains. Let's see it. Go ahead. All around, how many different ways can we move like liquid? Without using our voices at all, because if we use our voice, then we've popped our space bubble. Take about five more seconds. I see it, Brayden. I see it. Lots of different levels. Four, three, two, one. And come back to a neutral position. And then quickly make your way back to your partner in five, four, three, two, one. One, I just want to mention, because I see it, I know it is so tempting to get on our bellies. It feels so good to lay on the floor. I do it every single day. But what are some more interesting ways, I want you to think about it, that you could show liquid? That doesn't mean that you can't be at a low level for a part of your movement sequence, but I just don't want you to stay there the whole time. Think about using all of the different levels, okay? Make it really interesting. We don't want everyone to be showing water the same way. I saw lots of this. Brayden was doing some really cool, like middle level stuff and then down low. So let's think about all those interesting ways. Last one, gas or vapor form. I know you have some examples here. I want you to think about where in nature do we see H2O as gas or vapor form? Talk to your friend. I'm gonna come around and catch some ideas. You can see it in um, tornadoes, like the water vapor in in the very Montana Arctic, um, hot springs. Um, you can see clouds because clouds are like water vapor. Any more seconds? No. Water. Condensation. Five, four, three. Two, one, please make me your focal point. All right, I heard steam, I heard fog, I heard clouds. I heard some people even starting to talk about the different types of clouds, right? Everybody stand up. So we have these big puffy clouds. Can you show me with your body big puffy clouds? Make yourself into a big wide puffy cloud without using any sound effects. I know that's hard to do. Make yourself into a big puffy cloud and then move around the room like that big puffy cloud. These are called cumulus clouds. They're big puffy clouds like big marshmallow men, but we've got to stop with the sound effects because our movements are not as effective as telling, at telling a story when we use our voices. Very nice, and then freeze as your cumulus cloud. Very nice, we're gonna move on to a new type of cloud. Does anybody know a different type of cloud? Um, um, cumulus? We just did cumulus, um, a 
Stratus. Stratus cloud. What is so special about a Stratus cloud? Stratus cloud is streaky. They're streaky. Can you show me a streaky stratus cloud? Go ahead and move around the space like you are a streaky stratus cloud. Without using any sound, I know you can do it. You're strong enough to control your voices. A streaky stratus cloud, very nice. And then freeze as your streaky stratus cloud. It's too much. The voices are too much. This is the last warning. You're strong enough to control them, right? Are you strong enough? I know you are. Show me. Okay, um, last type of cloud, cirrus cloud, right? Oh. The cirrus cloud is, what's special about this one? Storm. Stormy, it's almost like a big blanket, right? That goes over the sky. It's like a big blanket that kind of street stretches across the sky. So go ahead and show me that cloud. Show me a cirrus cloud. Stretching, reaching across the sky. Good, and you can move like the cirrus cloud. We're in the sky. Think about using different levels, high and medium levels, and respecting your own dance space, your kinesphere, and other people's. Beautiful, and then freeze in a fantastic shape that represents your cloud, and then come back to a neutral position. Excellent, go ahead and have a seat right on the floor. We're gonna get right into it. So we just explored different types of clouds representing gas and water vapor, right? So within the water cycle, we have solid H2O, we have liquid H2O, and then we have gas and water vapor H2O. And in between there, we also have transitions. So what is the way that a solid becomes a liquid? What is the transition that has to happen? Brayden. Freezing. So from a, for a solid to become a liquid? Oh, you're close. melting. Melting, right? So the transition there would be melting. How does then the liquid become a gas or a vapor form? Logan. Heating, up. heating it up, and then what happens when you heat up the water? I, like, it does. It has a special word. Can you call on a friend who I think knows that word for you? It Help you tell. Evaporation, right? You got it. What is the major force? What is the major heating source that makes most bodies of water evaporate? William? Sun. The sun, right? The sun does that. Excellent. All right, so we have evaporation, then we have gas or water vapor and clouds. What happens? How does the water vapor turn back into liquid? What has to happen? Loriana? Close, before precipitation, something else has to happen, Brandon. Condensation. Condensation. Can you describe condensation to us? Um, and feel free to use your body if you can't describe it in words. When, like the water vapor goes up into the cloud, it mm -hmm. gets cold up there and then it starts to freeze and it spins and then when it comes down, it heats back up again. Yeah, and so when we think about the different particles in gas, right? Are particles close together or far apart in gas? Far apart, right? Show me with your bodies. In condensation, even in the word condensing, show me with your body what condensing means. Coming together, right? The particles start to come back together, and that's how it starts to turn into precipitation back into liquid, right? So we have condensation, then precipitation, right? Precipitation starts to happen. That precipitation leads into what? What's another transition? Yeah. Logan. Um, turns it back into water, right? It hits the ground. But one of you were talking about something that happens when the water hits maybe on top of a mountain or the side of a hill. You were starting to mention it. JR. Well, the precipitation comes down, hits the earth, and then something else happened, Bre Brendan. Bre uh, Brayden. Runoff, right? You guys mentioned runoff. That's why I added it in. So then the runoff will then flow into a body of water again, like, what are some examples? Lakes, rivers, Lakes, and rivers and oceans, oceans, things like that. And then what happens once it's in the water? It, it can evaporate again, or it can start to freeze to make it go back into a solid if it were in a place. So that's lots of different steps. And so in order to get all those steps solidified in our minds, we're gonna move through a dance sequence, a movement sequence for all of those. So we're all gonna start together 
as a solid. So again, doesn't have to be the same solid as you picked last time, but by the time I count to five, I wanna see you in your own kinesphere creating a shape that represents solid H2O. Go ahead, one, two, Lose, use those different levels too. Three, four, five. Now I wanna say something to you. Some of you have created shapes that are very low to the ground. Think about how that shape will change when you melt. Because a lot of the times when we start to melt, we start to do what? Go down. Move down towards the ground. So go ahead and revise your shape if you feel like you need to to make it more interesting. Think about it. We have glaciers. We have icicles, right? All different things. There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to hold this shape for four counts. Often in dance, we will work with four counts or eight counts like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to hold this one for just four counts and then we'll transition to melting. Here we go. One, two, three, four. We're melting. One, two, three, Four. After melting, we have liquid. So let's see us moving around this space, locomotor movement as liquid for four counts. One, two, three, four, and freeze. I'm seeing way too many people at a low level and we started on a low level, so we need to pick a new level. So if you started your solid shape at a low level, I'm challenging you to pick a different level now. So let's start from the top. Let's go back to that solid. We cannot have solid melting and liquid all at a low level. So you gotta figure out how you can play around with space to make your dance sequence a little bit more interesting, right? We're in the revision process. So we're solid for four counts. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And you're melting. One, two, three, Four, and your liquid, I said should see movement for one, two, three, four. And freeze, what happens to liquid when it heats up? It evaporates for one, two, three, four. And freeze, self-assess. Am I popping my space bubble, my kinosphere, by using my voice, bumping into other people? or other things, always self-assessing. So after evaporation, we are now gas or water vapor. Pick one of those clouds possibly and move through the space for one, two, three, four. Condensation, one, two. Remember those particles coming together. Three, four. Precipitation, one, two, three, Four, and then runoff. Let's see runoff for one, two, three, four. Flowing into a body of water for one, two, three, four. And we're freezing. One, two, three, four. And you're frozen. Hold it. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and stand up. So interesting. I want you to give yourself a little self-assessment. Let's check. Did you demonstrate clear and appropriate body shapes? This is not for you to answer out loud. I want you to think. Did you use lots of different types of shapes? Some with straight sides, some with curvy lines. How did you challenge your physical skills without causing danger to yourself or other people? Did you bump or get hurt or possibly step on someone's fingers? So always self-assessing. Did you show contrasting energies between the different states of matter, matter? Were you calm and fluid the whole time or did you show a little more excitement and um, were you a little more upbeat at different times throughout the sequence? How about your multiple levels in space? Remember I told you that you can't be solid at a low level and melt at a low level and be water at a low level. Did you use different levels? So we're self-assessing and thinking about how we can change it to make it better. Demonstrating locomotor and non-locomotor movement. So non-locomotor means we just stay in one spot. Locomotor means that we do what? 
we move around the space just like we explored with our kinesphere game, right? So we want to explore both locomotor and non-locomotor movement. Were you focused and intentional with your movement or were you kind of just flailing all over the place? If somebody asked you to repeat the same choreography or movement sequence again, could you do it? Was it intentional and clear in focus? Did you demonstrate rhythmic awareness? So did you have a steady beat as you moved? That's interesting. When we play the music, you'll have a little bit more of rhythmic awareness, I bet. Did you use different speeds or did you just stay at the same speed the whole time? And then did you accurately demonstrate how water changes between the states of matter? So really thinking about what condensation means, right? What evaporation means? What direction does it flow in? So take a moment, bless you, and just think about your sequence. You're going to repeat it again, but make those little changes. So now we're revising just like we would do in our writing, right? So now you're doing a little bit of revision. I want you to think about where you are in the classroom. Are you by friends that make you act a little silly, inspire you to make them laugh? That's okay, I get it too. I work with lots of teachers that I really enjoy being around and sometimes I like to make them laugh. For the purpose of this lesson, find a new space so that you can really get into your own imaginations and not worry about what anyone else thinks, okay? Find a space. Make sure that you're spread out enough that you're not gonna bump into anyone or anything else. Very nice. It might even be helpful to not make eye contact with people as you're moving, to really give it your all. This time around, I'm gonna put on some music and that will inspire us to move, I think, with grace and intention. All right, so we're starting as frozen solid H2O. Let's see those poses. Feel free to revise them a little bit, make them look a little different from last time. Frozen for four counts, here we go. One, two, three, four, and we're melting. One, two, three, four. Now you're liquid. One, two, three, four. Evaporation. One, two, three, four. Gas or water vapor, big cloud. One, two, three, four. Condensation within that cloud, particles coming together. Two, three, four. Precipitation. One, two, three, four, and run off. Feel free to locomotor movement. Use this space. Two, three, four. Flow right into a body of water and show me that body of water on a new level. One, two, three, four, and we're freezing. So slowing that movement down for one, two, three, four, and then your solid shape once again. One, two, three, four, and hold it. Very nice. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. All right. How did that go? Any reflections? What was challenging about it? Having to do a new thing. Having to try something new and revise it? Interesting. Anything else? What do you think, Logan, what was challenging? The runoff, why was it challenging? Interesting. So where were you when you were trying to show runoff? You were trying to slide downward? Were you at a low level when you were trying to show runoff? Were you already low? Medium. So I could see that. You could slope down when you're already at a medium level. Is it hard to show runoff when you're already low to the ground? Yes. Yeah, I still see a lot of people laying on their tummies and that's not really dance, right? We have opportunities to flow and really move with our bodies low to the ground without laying on our bellies. Once we've laid on our bellies, we lose a lot of our ability to move. So I'd really like you to think about that. How often throughout this dance sequence you're spread out on your belly, okay? I don't want to completely take away that your artistic choices if you really feel like that's the best way to show it, but I'm finding that there's lots of interesting movement we can do when we keep our limbs in some way off the ground. We can really use our arms and our legs and even our bellies, our torso, to show liquid. 
So I just want you to think about that as we revise one more time. Riley? Uh, the hardest to me was precipitation. Why? Because, like, it was, I feel like it was really hard to just go back down and go back up again and keep on doing it. To repeat it over and over yeah. again. Ah, oh, it's kind of a little bit of a workout. What else, Paris? The um, hardest to me was um, the water, like, runoff. The runoff as well? Yeah. And why was that, why was that difficult? Because I couldn't hold my position. Oh, so so dance builds strength, doesn't it? Yeah. You'll always think of dancers now as such strong athletes that have lots of strength and, yeah, um, resilience. Runoff. Because there, was, there wasn't that much space to move around. Right, we're sharing a space, so we need to be super careful. One more thought, Brandon, we're gonna move on. I was a uh, connotation because like, it's hard to go from this and then really like... Spread out? Yeah. To what? To small with everyone around. Yeah, to kind of do a big spread out shape as gas and then bring it in, condensation. So do you think that we, we get the sequence of the water cycle? Yeah. ching Awesome. We have the elements dance, we have the water cycle. Now we're able to use the elements of dance to portray the water cycle. How many of you think that you're doing a fine job that you could show this to another class that's learning about it and you can really teach them the sequence of the cycle? Awesome. All right. We're going to have one more little rehearsal. Make those final changes because then we're going to get to per do it in small groups. Here we go. Ready? Positions. Your first shape. And you're solid. One, two, three, four. And you're melting. One, two, three, four. Liquid. One, so much better. Two, three, four. Evaporation. One, two, three, four. Move around that space. Use locomotor movement to show me gas. One, two, Three, four, condensation. One, two, three, four, precipitation. One, two, three, four, and runoff. One, two, three, four, back to that liquid, that body of water. One, two, three, Four, and you're freezing, take your time with it. One, two, three, four, and hold those positions. Three, four, very nice. Come back to standing. Whoa, what an improvement from the beginning to the end. Did we see that? A lot like when you, what you do with writing, I think, right? Those small improvements, you gave me a box. Okay, now you're ready. We are going to be working in small groups now to create I'm not going to continue to tell you first this, then this. You have to think of the sequence now and how you're going to portray, show each step of the water cycle with your group. So you're all going to be dancing it together. You need to decide on what you're going to do to show a cloud as a group. What are you going to do to show precipitation as a group? How are you all going to work together to show a single body of water? How can you do this? By the time I count to five, you will be in a group of exactly four people. Go. One, two, three, four. That worked out perfectly. Go ahead and scooch back a little bit. Take that, this little corner. You guys can go right here. We'll have you just scooch back a little bit right into this area, and then you can use this area, okay? Perfect. All right, by the time I count to five, you'll be sitting down facing each other with me as your focal point. One. Two, three, four, five. Sorry, that's hard to do, right? I just said facing each other with me is your focal point. So you have to look over your shoulder. Awesome. All right. So this is kind of like the one minute challenge. It's building off of that structure. So I want you to think in your own mind, what could choreography, a movement sequence of the water cycle look like with a small group. We're all doing the working together to portray the same things at the same time. But now you have other people you get to work with to create the different structures, the different things found in the water cycle, right? You all get to work together to show one solid thing that is an example of H2O. You all get to work together to be a body of water. How are you going to do this? Think in your own mind, 10 seconds. Think of some ideas. Turn and face each other. 
making sure that everyone's ideas are heard, turn and face each other, you have about one minute to share some ideas before we get on our feet and start planning it out. Go ahead, some ideas. But we can all like be on different levels and then like sometimes two people could like join up to be one great thing. Or one That's what I was thinking like, yeah, and then all just different things. Or I was thinking for like the crowd, like three people like, or two people like lay down, like, like in the thing that we have all like this, and with their heads down, yeah. and the other two people like get can on top. Run in, like, or oh, like just two people stand on. Or like one person's in like an ice cube kind of position, and the ones over top of it. Like, Think about yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that was yeah. 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 I think for the rain, we should like precipitation. We should do like a waterfall, and then and then like 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 some of us be like this for like the thirty two one. Please make me your focal point. So I just want to draw your attention to this one because I heard some really great ideas and I'm really excited to see them. Challenging your physical skills without causing danger to yourself or others. I know that you are getting super creative and you're going to want to work together and if there's a way that we can safely touch and connect, there's also a way that you're going to connect, that want to connect to make it interesting that might cause danger to yourself or other people. So that doesn't mean that we cannot touch, but we cannot put our full body weight on somebody. We cannot be lifted off the ground. You have to keep at least one foot or one hand on the ground at all times, and you cannot put your full body weight on someone. Is that clear? So no sitting on someone, standing on someone, anything like that, okay? Use your best judgment to not scare us or scare each other, okay? Yes. Are you allowed to like touch someone? Absolutely, right? As long as it's okay with that other person, you can definitely touch and connect. Okie dokie, yes. are you ready to start planning this out? Yes. Yes. Make sure that you get each step of the water cycle. This is now your little test. I'm not gonna tell you the different parts that are in it. You should know by now, right? So go ahead, plan it out. You have about two, three minutes to plan this and then we'll share with each other. Go for it. So I feel like one, two people Starting should be like an iceberg, right? one's solid. like here and then the other person pointing out, like, and then someone's like an ice cube, and then like, someone's like this, and then we're like the ice cube, we're the ice cube. Like, some of the people can make in this conversation, like someone is just like jumping, something else. Because you're supposed to use like each level, so I feel like each of us should get a level, and then each of us should be on the level. I'll get a level. I'll get a level. I'll get a level. You're a medium. Okay, so well, I'll be like this to him. And you'll put, we'll both put it on. He'll be like, and then the other two will be like, oh, it's like, about like, each section and four counts. And I'll be like, like this. And then, like, you can do like that. Okay, and now let's start melting. We're melting them. So we each, we know how to do the melting. Yeah. 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 Like, me and you go at the same pace. Because glaciers, when everybody gets on your feet, the glaciers don't melt. They take a little bit. You can't like this, but like, I'll connect it as I speak. Then, oh yeah, like, they can like sink down slow. Are you only at two minutes? Two minutes, get up on your feet. Start practicing it. Yeah, you just go like that. You take very slow, so you go up a little faster, but now go back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next conversation. So I feel like me, what me and William said, someone's like this, yeah. and, like, and then someone's behind them like this, or like yeah, someone did this right now, yeah. and then I'll someone that. Okay. okay. I was thinking like um another one get next to him. Someone get next to him. Um, like Mia, you like do this on both of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then he'll, be the, he'll be the top one like this. Yeah, I'll be like that. Okay, okay. Uh, precipitation. Someone should be um, precipitation. Someone should be the um, I'll be the water. Yeah. But two people should be like the waterfall. And then Mia, you'll be like this to them. No, we should be in the middle spinning around. We yeah. should get anyone. Yes, you. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, so you have that whole 30 seconds. On the little so you're you're and then we're getting and then we're getting yeah. See? 
one last rehearsal. I'll put some music on to help you. Go ahead and give it a try with your group. Here, watch. This is so creative. <laughs> These guys are <laughs> You're so funny. Just a couple more seconds. Are you guys almost done with all the different pieces? And then, you've got and then his hand goes on us. Oh. And then it touches her back. Okay, you have just about 30 more seconds to finish it up. Do you think you have the whole thing yet? Are you still working on it? Sorry. How much more time do you all need? Almost there? Because we almost we got to go to your lunch time. Ten seconds. We only have ten. Four, three, two, one. So I know you're crunched for time. We didn't give you a lot of time to rehearse. Are there some groups that feel comfortable presenting yes. for others? Yes. You all want to present? Okay, so we're going to have you two groups sit right here. Sit as an audience. You're going to be calm and quiet, okay? We're going to have these two groups simultaneously present. So we're going to do our best as audience members to watch both groups, okay? Try your best to not use your voices at all. We know that this is a first draft, so we are noticing things that they did, their artistic choices, the risks that they took, and we're giving them the fullest, utmost respect, okay? Ready, take your first positions. And begin whenever you're ready. Go ahead, I'm gonna count it for you. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, it's okay. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We just got a huge round of applause. Let's switch really quickly and then we'll have some comments. You guys can discuss another time. If you don't want to go, that's okay. Does this group want to go? Okay, go for it. You can do it. You don't have to go if you don't feel ready yet. That's okay. Quickly, quickly. Switch. That was excellent. Go ahead and switch. Here we go. End places. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. 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 It's okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Just a quick minute. Quickly, quickly, because you have to run off to lunch. 
what are some things you are proud of either as a group, as a small group, as a class, or individually? Thinking about all of the things we covered today, using the different parts of movement, the elements of dance to show the water cycle. Go ahead and share with us, Eva. We worked together. You all did work together, absolutely. Without getting too crazy, we still, we still stayed on point and had fun. Yeah, and you were able to collaborate to choreograph a dance about the water cycle? Yeah. Absolutely. Did you get all the pieces in there? Yeah. Could you take a test on this tomorrow and ace it? No. You don't, you don't think so? What if you practiced the dance a couple more times? Yeah. Would you get it in your mind? What do you think, William? We had fun together. Fun together. Mia? Um, it, so we messed up sometimes, but we still got back together. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Doesn't that apply to all different things that you do in school? Right? You learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Um, what else, Brandon? Things like we actually were good and we weren't fooling around a lot. And like when we did mess up, like Mia said, we never gave up and we kept trying. Perseverance and teamwork. Excellent. Quickly, JR. I, like we didn't really plan it that much because we didn't have time. And we kind of like made it up as we went on. Improvisation, we call that, right? But knowing the different parts of the water cycle made that easier to do. What do you think? Teamwork and like cooperation. Absolutely. And Paris, last one. Right. You cooperated. You worked collaboratively, and that was our ultimate goal. Thank you so much for today. I hope you get to do this again and again with different cycles. Have an excellent lunch. So sorry. I want to.